In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the best white rum you can use in your cocktails. Hey rum fam, welcome back to the channel. My name's Steve the Barman and in this video, I'm going to be kind of dissecting and take you through some of the best white rums that you, I think you should be using in your cocktails. Now there are obviously a lot of different types of rum out there. Gold rums, dark rums, aged rums, however you want to classify them, spiced rums. But in this, I'm just going to purely dedicate this to white rums, one of my favorite categories. And I say that because I really do love and adore some white rums to sip neat. That is the first thing I want to make clear in this video, even though this is all about cocktails and you know which white, white rums you should be using in cocktails, don't be put off sipping white rums neat. Yes, some of them are not great, I will be honest, but there are some belters out there with bags of flavor, absolutely bags of flavor. And this, this one, again, is another one of my favorites. I adore sipping this neat, this is cracking. But I think with Bacardi, a lot of people have been conditioned to think white rum is, you know, not great. It is just there as a cheap and cheerful mixing rum. But boy, have times changed. Even over the last sort of three, four, five years, you know, the quality of white rums has been upped massively. So don't, please, do not lump all white rums together with Bacardi. Bacardi really does give the category a, a bad name. And I'm not saying it's a bad rum. It's just there are so many better rums out there. So, you know, in this day and age, white rums, you almost do have different white rums for sipping neat. You do have a different white rum for a daiquiri. You do have a different white rum for a rum and coke. And you may even have a different white rum for a kind of a, a, a more involved cocktail. Basically what I'm trying to say is long gone are the days where white rums were, be, were considered just sort of flavorless sugarcane molasses based spirits. That is really not the case anymore. Now the one thing I do want to make clear in this video is that, you know, this is all subjective. What I think and may enjoy may not be what you think and what you enjoy. Hopefully with all the videos I do and you regulars that watch me, hopefully you'll have an idea of my palette. And my job is not to put anyone off any style of rum because I'm not naive enough to think that my palate and this is the best rum for that job. I purely guide you from my perspective. So for those of you that don't have or don't share my perspective, I do try and give those opinions as well. But the best way I can describe it is from my opinions. Now, I'm not saying this is the best place to start, but I'm going to start here anyway. It's my video. It's my favorite cocktail. So I'm going to start with the daiquiri. Of course I am. Now, to me, and actually it's not to me because it's how it should be. The daiquiri is all about light, clean, crisp, bright rums that bring that together as a cocktail. The daiquiri is not about funky pot still rum. It is about those column still vibes. However, I know a lot of people that disagree with that. I know a lot of people that love pot still in a daiquiri. And that is absolutely fine. I'm not saying you're wrong because palettes have changed. The cocktail has changed. But if we're being true and authentic to the daiquiri, it is column still and it is that light, bright, bright, clean, crisp kind of flavour profile. All right. So that's where I'm going to go. But I'm going to give you some pots of alternatives as well. So to start off with, the rums that I think you should be looking at for a daiquiri, they're these bad boys. I don't think you could go wrong with these. I always say Cubay is my passion brand. However, you know, is my be all and end all. It's my favourite daiquiri until I do a blind taster and then that comes out. But that is, you know, Chairman's, they do have, uh, they while they do use pot as well, they do have their column coffee stills in there. And while I don't know the actual DNA of that rum, I would suspect a lot of it is the column still, the column coffee stills that make up the bulk of that rum. Uh, but we've got, that. that's the difference in here. We, for me, it is primarily, and that was the shock when I did that as a blind tasting, because it is primarily Spanish influence kind of Colin still rum. But that is an absolute belter. It really, really is good. But these four rums, I think, are the epitome of what a daiquiri should be. But look, I'm not naive to think that these don't feature at all. 
these will have so many fans out there in the community. So many of you guys watching will hands down prefer these. And as I say, that's absolutely fine. Doesn't really go to what the cocktail is about, like bright, clean, crisp, you know, column still. But hey, you do, you, you know, I'm not, the, the, you, these make lovely daiquiris. They really, really do. Uh, I will always be in that camp, but I cannot deny these do make qu uh, quality cocktails. You've got very different flavour profiles going on there. This one's the quirky little riff on there with the sort of Jamaican and Martinique rum in there, sort of a Jamaican molasses with a Martinique agricole gone in there, sugarcane juice. You can't go wrong with these. They do make a different daiquiri to what these do, a very different daiquiri but you can't go wrong. And for all you British scratch rum fan people out there, you know, for me, these are the two pick of the bunch from the British Isles scratch rum. We've got the Isle of Man Hooli, and we've got uh, Richens from Somerset, uh, the Retribution. They are both pot still. Again, very, very different vibes to what goes on there, but they do make really, really good dax. Now, before I go any further, you experienced daiquiri lovers, Put your daiquiri rum in the comments below. Help the rest of the community out. Now, when we move on to cocktails and mixers, this is what I said at the top about you needing, or sh don't need, but I think you should need, different rums for different jobs. Because this is where my opinion changes. Because even while I love those column stills in a daiquiri, I probably wouldn't use any of those four in cocktails or mixers where you want a little bit of the rum profile to come through, a little bit more oomph. Those four column still rums that I have there don't really do that job in cocktails. So when I'm talking about white rums with a bit more grunt, that's where these three step up to the plate because they are absolutely brilliant at that. But again, all three of these taste completely and utterly different and will add different flavor profiles to your cocktails. It's just because they have got elements of pot still in them. All right, this is column still, but it's 47% ABV and has huge different characteristics to it, to those column stills that I've got here. You know, this is really lovely, flavorful, flavor forward rum. They just add that different dimension to your cocktails. However, I think we can actually do a little bit better. Now, this won't be a worldwide available rum, and no, it's not a British scratch rum, but I think this is a big, big player in cocktails. Now, I don't know what it is about this rum. I kind of wrote it off, sipping it neat. I wrote it off in a daiquiri. It wasn't to my style because I like those column stills. But you know what? In all those blind sort of tastings that I do uh, on my Steve DeBarman Extra channel, and that's a good shout out for my two other channels as well, but you are watching me on my main channel here. But if you want to go and see different content, I do uh, spiced rum and cocktails on Steve DeBarman Extra, and I do rum reviews, British Scratch rum and worldwide rum reviews on my Steve DeBarman rum reviews channel. So go and check those out. I just want to take a very quick moment of your time to thank this week's show sponsors. It's Stratford Soda. It's a long-term ongoing uh, paid promotion because I just love these guys so much. Um, low in carbonation, low in sugar, the only dedicated mixer brand, rum or oh, mixer brand in the UK for rum. If you want to try these, if you're in the UK for the very first time, uh, we're giving you 50% off your very first order. And there's a link that will auto populate in the description below, auto populate at checkout. So don't get all confused. It's when you check out, you'll see it magically kind of give you a cheaper price. Four in the range at this precise moment, the citrus, which is what I call the long daiquiri. We've got the tropical, which I call the long pina colada, pineapple and coconut, without the sort of the creaminess. Uh, we've got the spiced, not to be confused with ginger beer, or cinnamon forward with a hint of ginger, absolutely delicious. And we've got the hedgerow, which is blackberry and rum. I strongly urge every single pub, bar, hotel, restaurant, up and down the UK to get involved in these and get these in your bottle chillers because for the upcoming uh, rum boom, the upcoming rum trend, these are going to play an integral part. And I just want to do my bit to take them like UK. Let's take them global because they are fantastic. I love them. And also while you're checking stuff out, come and join us in Discord as well. My Discord rum Discord community is growing by the day, by the week. You know, it's it's the outer part is totally free. It is getting a little bit of a makeover on the 1st of April. So there'll be lots more content available in the free area. But do come and join us. Come and join the rum community over there. Now, back to this rum. As I say, when I was rocking this out in the cocktail challenges, this just shines 
every single time. It is this blend of Jamaican white rum and Martinique. So you've got the molasses and you've got the agricole sugarcane juice vibe coming out. This just adds amazing riffs to your favorite cocktails or mixes without going down the whole agricole route that I know does put a lot of people off and without going down the whole Jamaican route, which again is not to everyone's taste. This, I, honestly, if you don't like agricole, if you don't like Jamaican rum, I would still urge you to try this because this just brings something different to the party. And this for me will be an always permanent stock and it's relatively cheap trade price, all right, because it's, so I use a company in the UK called Master of Malt. This is, it is tied to Master of Malt. It is a separate company, but it is part of the overall brand of Master of Malt. That's why they do do it a little bit cheaper, but I think it's still like 24, 25 pounds not to trade. However, as I've mentioned them, I cannot not talk about Agricole because while it's not my favorite style, when it comes to cocktails, Wow, they do add a different fun twist to a cocktail. I really do bring Clarins would fit in here as well. I've got a Clarin communal, I think. I need to go down the Clarin rabbit hole a bit more. But Agricole um, and Madeira do add a, a different level. Now, for me, in the UK, we only really get the 40. I'm lucky enough to have a little bit of the 50% left on there, which is kind of the French European version in there, but we get the 40% in the UK. The 50 is a lot better in cocktails, it really is. However, what we do get is the 50% cane blue, uh, the non-vintage version. We'll get the vintage as well, but it's the cheaper non-vintage version. And that really does work so well in cocktails. Same as the TVT, the 60% of this stuff and amazing, even in daiquiris, again, not my favorite, but it, they just add that different complexity to cocktails that just you cannot sort of, you, you cannot look, by, look past because they just, they just work so well. Again, not to everyone's cup of tea, but if you're willing to try something different, or if you're willing, if you wanna put a different spin on a cocktail without changing the recipe up, then a different rum, like in Agricole, will certainly put that different spin on things. Now, I think we've covered the cocktails and the mixers and the daiquiris, but as I mentioned at the top, you know, I do love to sip white rums neat as well. So I kind of have to give you my top picks for that. Now, these have already featured here, but you know, to, just to go worldwide for two seconds, worldwide, I think these are the two. I've got one extra special one coming up in a second, but these two would be my worldwide picks. But for UK, I've, I'll stand by this. I've said it on videos. I adore this stuff. This is pot still, proper copper pot still, UK British scratch rum. And for any of you in the UK, I defy you not to enjoy that neat because uh, it is an absolute stunner. It really is. You know, it is 42%. I think it's 44% ABV, but it does, really does punch its weight. It's such a great one. But there is one better. And that is this sexy little beast from Cuba. Ron Cuba, 14 years old. Extra Viejo. Oh my God. This, all right, it's a little bit expensive. We're talking, I don't even know what the price is, but you know, we're talking loosely 135 pounds in the UK. For me, it's worth every single penny of that because it is leaps and bounds above any other white unaged rum. I mean, all right, it's aged, it's 14 years, but it is leaps and bounds above any other white rum that you'll ever come across. It is absolutely stunning. Yes, you're paying a little bit for the presentation box as well, but oh my God. If someone tells you you can't sip white rum, neat, they're having a flipping laugh.